Hello everyone, what's up? In today's video I'm going to show you how I painted and weathered this Grim FT-17 tank by Grim Prince. Next week I'll cover the winter slush diorama base that I made for it in a second video. By the way, I'm auctioning off both and donating all proceedings to help Ukrainian refugees. If you're interested, hurry up and place a bid now, link in the description. Let's get started, shall we? This is the Grim FT-17, an awesome little 3D printed tank designed by Grim Prince. The weird photo etch parts that you see on the tag are from a Chaos Renegade etch brass set by Forgeworld, which I recently acquired. That was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? At this stage, the primer in the tank had dried for over 24 hours, so it was time for the base coat. I wanted a sort of bluish, dark gray finish, so I picked up paint that I had never used before. Dark Sea Blue from the AK Real Colors line. I mixed this 50% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner and sprayed it at around 20 PSI. If you're familiar with my videos, you might feel like there's something missing, right? No chipping fluid and no liquid mask either. How come? Well, for this project, I decided to go back to a chipping method which I had literally not used in almost a year. Sponge chipping. Therefore, it was just a matter of getting a nice base coat down. And as you may already know, base coating with real colors paints is a real pleasure. In a few minutes, I was ready to apply some highlights with the airbrush. For this, I just added some more white and some blue paint to what was left in the airbrush cup and thinned that right down with more lacquer thinner. The resulting finish, now both lighter and bluer, or more blue, I don't know, looked pretty cool, but I wanted to create a little bit more contrast. Therefore, I got out one of my ammo shaders, which I also hadn't used in ages, and sprayed it on areas surrounding the previous highlights. This worked well, so it was time to move on to sponge chipping. For this I used Hellblau by Ammo, that's just a German light blue, and a bit of kitchen sponge held with tweezers. As you can see, this allowed me to create really fine control chips, and the color was a good match for the base coat. I must say that this step was really good fun, and it brought back a lot of memories, mostly of a couple of much, much larger tanks, that I had done in similar colors ages ago, to Forge World Macarius. You might remember them. Anyways, when I was done with the sponging, it was time to fill the chips with the brush. For this, I used a mix of black and red acrylic paints by Scale 75 and one of my better brushes. Unlike painting by brush as such, which I honestly hate, this was really enjoyable. I had basically forgotten how much fun it is to see this completely fake chipping method become more convincing little by little. With the chipping done, it was time for a pin wash, of course. This time I went with an old favorite of mine, Dark Wash by Ammo, which is an enamel wash. I applied this thin around 30% with odorless thinner and using a synthetic liner brush, as I always do. I forgot to mention that I had varnished the model with Tamiya Clear prior to this, which I did off camera. As you can see, this dark greenish color worked well, and applying the pin wash was an easy and fun experience, as always. Twenty-four hours later, I applied a generous coat of chipping fluid off-camera, and once that dried, I got ready to do a winter whitewash. For this, I picked Matte White by Ammo, which, with a couple of drops of acrylic thinner, sprays quite well for a water-based white, that is. Needless to say, this should be a semi-transparent light coat. We're not looking for complete opacity in this case. By the way, I almost forgot to mention that another thing I did off camera was apply a pin wash to the etched brass parts with AK medium rust deposits. Anyway, immediately after applying the coat of white, I picked one panel, I applied some water to it, and I gently started rubbing with the brush in order to reveal the gray underneath. As you will see with the diorama next week, I wanted to represent a sort of end of winter scenario, so the winter camo should be really worn out. I tried to move the brush only downwards so that the upper part of each panel would have almost no white, with the bottom being better preserved. The effect worked well, but as one of my Discord members pointed out, the chipping was very hard-edged, so I went back with washable white 
in order to restore some of the white and also make the chips a bit more diffuse. I knew that some of this would be obscured by the mud, but in any case, thank you Stefan, you gently nudged me in the right direction and I was happy with the results afterwards. Time for a second pin wash. Are you crazy you may ask? Well, on my previous winter camo vehicle, over two years ago, gosh, I made the mistake of omitting this step, and I wanted to make sure not to repeat it. The idea is that the vehicle obviously has gotten dirty between the application of the whitewash and now, and in fact my narrative for this vehicle would be that despite its diminutive size, it has somehow survived on the front lines for an extended period of time, hence all the dirt and damage, right? This DAK or DAC wash worked very well and really helped increase contrast, which with a grey and white finish could easily end up being insufficient otherwise. The next part was to lay the foundations for all the mud effects. First I decided to airbrush this enamel wash, thinned around 50% with odorless thinner. My usual very gentle trigger technique does not work with enamels at all, so after some initial irritation I switched to short, controlled bursts instead. Just as Corporal Hicks recommended, let me know in the comments if you understand this solution. <laughs> anyway, I was happy with the effect, but I decided to add something which I hadn't planned. Some pigments. I knew that there was a good chance that this extra step would be redundant but I thought, what the heck. So I stippled some pigments all over the areas which I had airbrushed with the enamel. When I was done, I removed any excess with a fan brush and I prepared myself for the main event, mud splashes. Instead of using an enamel this time, I had this crazy idea to use the same paste which I had used on the diorama, but thinned down with water. After all, I knew that this was glossy and had texture which is exactly what I wanted. So I turned down the pressure to around 7 psi on my airbrush and I started using the same technique which I have always used with the blood splatter effects on my beloved world eaters. I was pretty happy with the resulting volume and texture and I thought that this complemented the previous layers quite well. After that I turned to the tracks, and this time rather than complicate my life with several steps of enamels and pigments, I merely stippled some of the same acrylic mix directly onto the center of each track, where mud would accumulate in real life. When I finished, I then used a makeup sponge to remove some of the excess, focusing on the raised edges. Next up I made a mix representing muddy slush, and applied that to the tracks before the previous layer had dried. To that I added AK Snow Sprinkles for that ultimate slush concoction, but I'm afraid that I forgot to press record for that last sub-step. Anyway, you will see my recipes for both in the upcoming diorama video next week. At the risk of blowing my own trumpet, I was very happy with the results. This was one properly filthy grim FT-17, I thought. <laughs> like I said before, in my next video I'll show you in detail how I made this little wintry diorama base for the FT-17. This was my first time doing snow and mud, or a muddy snow diorama if you like, and I'm really excited to share my process for that next. But before that, I would like to thank our new YouTube members this month, namely Malice in Wonderland, Corax Cox, Nick Armiger, Andrei Mishenko, and Dustin Johnson. Thank you very much guys, your support makes a real difference to me, and it helps me keep making content each month. That's all for me for now, folks, but remember, keep it up and weather it out.